Hey, what's up guys? It's TechZoomer talking to you here. And today I have the M2 MacBook Air against the M1 Max MacBook Pro. I'm gonna start this video just by saying this is not a comparison just for the sakes of the comparison because it doesn't make any sense to compare these two computers. If you knew, do know what this computer is and what this one is for, you will probably think this comparison is ridiculous because it is. The M1 Max MacBook Pro is about $4,000. It's the most powerful Apple laptop on the lineup right now. The M2 MacBook Air base model, this one, has only 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. It's the starting computer for the Apple Silicon laptop lineup. So it doesn't make any sense to be comparing these two computers for the sake of saying this one is better than this one. And this one doesn't thermally throttle when exposed to extreme powerful conditions well, this one does. And this one can handle some things that this one can. So it doesn't make that much sense to talk about this way because these computers are for two different markets. They were made for two different markets, obviously. But the main thing that I want you to take from this video is the Apple Silicon spectrum of compromises you have to take. So when you are buying a lap Apple Silicon laptop, you should decide between these two laptops and of course the laptops on the middle. My objective today is to show you what can the worst Apple Silicon MacBook offer you and what can the best offer you. And then you will probably land on the middle of these two computers. Of course, this one starts at $1199 and this one starts at $3499 or around $4,000. So the difference between these two computers is more than three times the price. And I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> I want to say that, at least at the beginning of this video, the differences are not what you were expecting. Yes, the performance is very different, but there's some stuff that also Apple has changed and improved between these two computers, although visually they have a very similar design. This one is a 13-inch display and this one is a 16-inch display. So if you are interested in this creation of the Apple Silicon Spectrum, that's what I will call it during this video, then do not forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all my M2 coverage and of course my M1 Max and M1 Mac content that you will all love. And of course iPhone 14 and other stuff that you might also like. Do not forget to leave a like, subscribe down below and let's begin. So, like I was telling you before the intro, the Apple Silicon spectrum of compromises is real. Because in this computer you have the worst Apple Silicon laptop starting at $1199. And in this one, you have the best Apple Silicon laptop and the most powerful one starting at $34.99. And so in these two corners, you have the difference between the old Apple Silicon lineup. You have the big spectrum that lies between these two computers, the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro 14 inch, the M2 MacBook Pro, the more expensive non band based model of the M2 MacBook Air, the M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro, a lot of computers and a lot of MacBooks that lie between these two. And of course, well, where should you compromise and where should you land when buying a computer? Well, in this video, I will compare these two and let you know what are the things that you are going for if you go for the lower base model computers and what things will you get if you go for the higher end up computers because I will show you the best ones and I will show you the worst computer. And then by showing you the best and the worst, you will get an idea of which computer would you land on, on the Apple Silicon spectrum of compromises. But of course, these two laptops are not nearly comparable in terms of performance. So I will show you some benchmarks, but I will not focus a lot on performance. I think that I will start with the display because the display is one of the main things that you will notice on a computer and it's probably one of the most important ones. So the M2 MacBook Air features a 13 inch liquid retina display. This is not mini LED, this is not promotion. It's just the regular old LCD. This has a 500 nit brightness well, the 16 inch MacBook Pro features a 16 inch display, which is mini LED and of course has promotion capabilities. So you can refresh rate until 120 Hertz and go down to 24 Hertz and all of those between. Of course, this display is much brighter. It goes up to 1100 nits. While the sustained brightness is around 500, this display can go up to 1100 nits when watching HDR content. You can do some things and work around so you can place it at 1100 nits all the time. Although I do not recommend it just because it can burn out your display or at least your battery life. So this display is much, much better for watching content, to work, to edit videos on, to edit photos on, just because the contrast ratio is so much better, the colors are way more real, and of course, it's just a better display in general. So it's not no, more than noticed that these two displays 
are very different. This one is a 13 inch, a smaller type of laptop display. And this one is a very big laptop. I compare these two displays like this is a very portable computer. This is a computer that you will take anywhere to the coffee shop, anywhere, like everywhere that you want to work on, you can pick up your computer from the bag and work on. While this one is more of a portable PC, like a portable desktop. It's weird to explain it, but because it's so big, so heavy, so like, big display. I think it, you will use it like when you are moving between houses, when you are on the train, when you are on the plane, it's easier to use this computer than when you're bringing your desktop. But it's also big enough so it's a cumbersome when bringing it to a coffee shop or at least when you are trying to work on the go. So, I mean, these two laptops serve very two different purposes and these two screens serve very two different purposes. This screen was made to be affordable, easy to produce and of course very good when watching content and streaming videos while this one was made so at every professional had their perfect refresh rate and the perfect color ratio tuned for their perfect needs so this one is more for pros and since the name promotion this one is a liquid patina it's for the normal people that will look at the display and think wow this is an amazing display it's the best laptop display ever that i've ever used because of course Windows displays are not as good as this one. Even the OLEDs are not as goodly refined as this one because this one is perfectly, perfectly color balanced and I mean the colors for everyone look amazing. Of course, like I was telling you, this display is a 13 inch, this display is a 16 inch. And if you are looking at these displays, you will probably notice that the bezels are very thin and they look very alike because the new M2 MacBook Air now features the new no, no bezel or almost no bezel treatment and the notch. This one also features the notch. The notch here, I think it goes better on the M1 Max just because the 16 inch has a mini LED display and the mini LED display can present more real blacks. So the notch can be hidden more easily while this one doesn't. But it will probably not notice the difference and I will tell you that the notch in these two computers is no problem. Don't really care about the notch. I mean, I think that between the spectrum of these two computers, so between the worst computer and the best computer, there's only one computer that doesn't have the notch, and that's the M2 MacBook Pro. And that computer I won't advise you to buy, so do not buy the M2 MacBook Pro. And other than that, all of the computers that go between this one and this one, they have the notch. And you, can't, you will be able to, to get used to it, so do not take a lot of consideration when buying this computer and Apple Silicon laptops when considering about the notch. The display though, until $2,000 or until $1999 and or at least the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro 14 inch, you will get the liquid retina display. After you go for the M1 Pro 14 inch, you will start to be getting the mini LED promotion display. So if you go for the new generation Pro models, you will get the incredible promotion mini LED display. If you don't, you will get the liquid retina present on the M2 MacBook Air. Is it a problem for you guys that don't really care about promotion or even more deep blacks? No, it isn't. So between these two displays, obviously the more expensive computer has the better display, but I don't think the differences for the average consumer are very noticeable. So it's not a big thing. And you will have an amazing display here, an amazing display here. This one is more geared up for professionals and this one is more geared up for the average consumer. Right on present on the display, we have the notch. Like I was telling you, the notch is present in all of the computers except the M2 MacBook Pro, but what houses on the notch is the more important thing. These two laptops have the same webcam. They have a 1080p webcam and it works great. I think that the M2 MacBook Air has a little bit better tuning just because of the M2 chip new core design and I think it looks pretty great. This is the microphone and camera test for the M2 MacBook Air. This is a 1080p camera and I think it looks amazing for a webcam on a computer. The same probably as the M1 Max MacBook Pro or a little bit better. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. While the M1 Max MacBook Pro it still has an amazing webcam. I don't think you will be able to notice the difference at bare high or even if you are not a professional, but I think that there's a little bit of a difference, but not noticeable for the average people. But they are very amazing webcams and the microphones are also incredible. I showed you the microphone before on the M2 MacBook Air and on the M1 Max MacBook Pro is even better. Hey guys, <laughs> this is uh, Tag Summer here and this is vlogger style on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is my camera test and what do you think? This is also the microphone test. Let me know in the comments below how I look. I think I look pretty great. My looking at my and testing out, I think that's pretty good. This is a 1080p camera, but it looks pretty great. And for zoom calls, it looks perfect. In my opinion, a little bit more crisp than the center stage camera on the studio display. 
but let me know in the comments down below how it looks and how it sounds, the microphones. So, as you saw, the two webcams and microphone performance, they are very good for you to do Zoom calls and FaceTime calls for your work. So I do think these two laptops are insanely cool to use and their webcams are very, very good and their microphones are also insane. Then there are the speakers part, which there are very big differences between these two. Yes, the speakers are one of the things that you will notice more of the differences between these two laptops. And the spectrum of the Apple Silicon lineup is going like this. The M2, MacBook Air and the M2, MacBook Pro, they are have the worst speakers, they are the cheapest computers. While the M1 Max 16 inch has the better speakers and has the better sounding speakers also. And they are the most expensive computers. And what lies between is the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which has good speakers, better than the M2 generation, but worse than the 16 inch. So if speakers are a big thing for you, then I think that the M1 Pro and the M1 Max 16 inch should be your choice. And to try to show you what are the differences between these speakers, I've made a comparison so you can really notice the difference. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the two speakers. <laughs> As you heard, the speakers are very different. On this one, it's much louder, much fuller, and has a lot more bass, just because it has more drivers, it has bigger speakers, it's just better in general. While the M2 MacBook Air, they hide the speakers on front of the display and on the back of the keyboard. They don't have the grill anymore, like here and here, like they had on this 16 inch and 14 inch generation. So if you do really care about speakers, microphone quality, I do think the Pro generation of MacBook Pro, it's still for you. Go for the 14 inch if you don't really care about the speaker quality and go for the 16 inch if the speaker quality is all the things for you. So spend a little bit extra money if you do really need this hardware, don't if you don't really need the bulkiness that big speakers bring to your device. In terms of design, these two computers feature a similar design. The M2 MacBook Air inspired its design on the M1 Max and M1 Pro 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros, the new generation ones. It has a less rounder but more uniform design. It's much, much better to hold on. And in the case of MacBook Air, makes it a lot, a lot thinner, like really thin. It's just ridiculous how thin this laptop is when compared to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is a big boy, a bulky boy. Expect the 14 inch MacBook Pro to be between these two. And of course, the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, it has all design that we will probably know. So you don't really care about it. But the newer design on these two computers is very similar. Even the display, the bezels, the keyboard, the trackpad, the feeling on the hand, this one is just much more heavy, much more bulky. While this one, the M2 MacBook Air, is a lot lighter and way more portable than the M1 Max 16 inch. So if you do really, really need a portable computer, try to lean on the M2 side, the M2 MacBook Air side, or even the M1 Pro 14 inch if you do really need the performance, but you need the portability. I do think that the 14 inch design it's the perfect sweet spot between these two computers in terms of portability. You have portability, but you also have high end performance. While the 16 inch, you have the highest end of performances, but you will lose a little bit on portability. You will have to compromise. And the M2 MacBook Air is even more portable, even more light, but you will have to compromise a little bit on performance. But at the end of the day, if you don't really care about performance, then the M2 MacBook Air is for you. This is an amazing computer still, even on the base model side. Well, the M1 Max, if you don't really care about portability like me, you will want you to use on two different houses, on university, on the train, on the plane, but you don't really care to use it on the go, then yeah, the 16 inch just might be for you. So these two laptops are adapted for their two different purposes. And that's why I think this is all a spectrum. You cannot compare them directly. These are two laptops made for two different things. And so at the end of the day, the M2 MacBook Air is perfectly tailored for its purpose and the M1 Max MacBook Pro is also perfectly tailored for its purpose. So the designs are different, but they serve two 
different purposes and that's why I think there's no winner here. Let's now talk about performance, shall we? Because it's the most controversial thing between these two computers. But at the end of the day, it's the thing that matters the least. Because these two computers serve two different markets, so the performance is not even comparable. This one has a 10-core CPU, a 32-core GPU, 8 high-performance cores, 2 high-efficiency cores. This one has an 8-core CPU. It has 4 high-performance cores, 4 efficiency cores. So it has 4 high-performance high cores less than the M1 Max, and it has 2 more high-efficiency cores. So it's a more efficient computer, it lasts more in terms of battery life, but in terms of battery life they are more of the same because this computer has a huge battery. But the M2 MacBook Air is more focused on efficiency, less on power. Also, it has only a 10-core GPU, so it's not as fast and not as powerful as this 32-core GPU, which is just insane. These two computers are geared up for two different markets, of course. So this one is filled up with 32 gigabytes of RAM and can go to 64, and this one is only able to go to 24 gigabytes of RAM, although this is the base model, 8 gigabytes of RAM. There are two different types of computers. This one has very fast storage, this one doesn't, doesn't really need it. This one has a very fast GPU and CPU, this one doesn't, although this is just as snappy and faster in single core tasks, but in terms of multi-core tasks and very heavy loads, it doesn't. So I will geared up some benchmarks for you to notice the difference between these two, but keep in mind, these are very two different price points and you can buy three of those for the price of this one. So do not take to the heart these benchmarks, they are just a little a little consolation for you guys that just want to know what is the difference between the worst and the best Apple Silicon laptop in terms of performance. Let's first begin with a Geekbench 5 test. This is a test for the single core performance and multi-core performance. Let's run it first on the 16-inch MacBook Pro and then on the M2 MacBook Air. So we can get the results and compare them. So the test is finished and as you can see the M2 MacBook Air got 1929 points for single core performance and 8781 for multi core performance. As for the M1 Max MacBook Pro, we got 1733 for single core performance and 12830 for multi core performance. So we can see that the single core performance is better on the M2 because we have better cores. But the multi core performance is still better on the M1 Max because we have more. CPU cores. And so the performance differences are very interesting. For the single core performance, we got a 11% jump from the M2 from the M1 Max. For the multi core, we got a 32% jump for the M1 Max. So the M2 is 11% faster in single core performances, but the M1 Max is 32% faster in multi core purposes. As for the GPU performance test on Geekbench 5 Compute, the M2 MacBook Air gets 26,529 points, while the M1 Max MacBook Pro gets 68,505 points. And so, the M1 Max MacBook Pro is 2.6 times faster in GPU performance than the M2 MacBook Air. In short, these two computers are insane. These two computers are very well made for their two different markets. The M2 MacBook Air is an amazing computer for the average consumer and the M1 Max MacBook Pro is an amazing computer for the prosumer market. So I don't think they are even comparable in any means and the spectrum that lies between these two computers is more important. Should you buy the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro starting at $2,000 or should you buy a more specced out version on the M2 MacBook Air? That's a more interesting comparison than the worst versus the best. Because these two are very two different computers. They are two different markets. But they serve a purpose when comparing them between those two because you can understand which computer is the best for you. That lies between those two. Which compromises should you do? Which compromises should you not do? And which computer should you go for? A very hard decision on the Apple Silicon lineup that you have to make for yourself. But I have videos on my channel that can help you out. So. Go on my channel, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, of course, turn on the notification bell so you don't lose any of my videos, and of course, like this one so it can get to more people. Comment down below which computer would you like to buy on the Apple Silicon lineup, and what things are you okay compromising on the Apple Silicon lineup in terms of price, in terms of course, GPU, everything. Let me know in the comments down below, and of course, what computer would you choose between these two? A more powerful but bulkier computer, or a less powerful and more portable computer? Let me know in the comments down below. This has been Tech Summer talking to you here. Bye.